Hello everyone, welcome back to Photo Focus. My name is Mark Morrow, thank you for joining me. I wanted to stop in today and share with you a part two to a recent article that is a review posted over at photofocus.com entitled Digitally Converting Slides and Negatives with Jumble. The Jumble is a very handy little scanner digitizer that can be used to convert old slides and negatives into the digital world. Uh, it, it really is a capable device. It's compact. You can use it at home, in the studio, or on the road. Uh, to learn more about this little device, head over to the article at photofocus.com and uh, read up and learn to your heart's content on what this little device can do. Uh, in the meantime, today, I thought that we would take a look at a couple of restoration tips, having scanned the images into your computer that we can uh, now bring new life, rejuvenate the images, and bring them back to life again and, and uh, make any color shifts, remove any spots, uh, really do what we can to enhance the images uh, and get back to the full effect of the original photograph. And so uh, let's jump right in and take a look at a few examples. My preference is to use a bridge to Photoshop workflow, so that's what we'll be using for the purposes of this tutorial, but all steps are equally applicable to those who prefer a Lightroom workflow as well. Let's jump in and take a look at a few samples, but before we do, a quick caveat about film types. The two main types of positive film slides that I've been working with have been Kodachrome and Fujichrome. Kodachrome has a notorious shift to the purple side and Fujichrome has a notorious shift to the green side. Uh, what we see here are primarily Kodachrome. Both of these are fairly straightforward corrections within the Adobe Camera Raw interface by way of white balance adjustments or if we have to, if necessary, uh, to desaturate the purple side or the greens, whichever ones uh, that we need. So let's scroll down and take a look at this first example. These images happen to be from my dad's library that were captured from 1959 to 1963 over in Europe while he was in college. This particular image happens to be of a hillside in Ireland. The images have great meaning to me uh, in that I grew up watching them on the old slide projector at family occasions and uh, really are the onus and foundation for my own interest in photography. And so I have really enjoyed uh, scanning and going through and doing what I can to bring the images back to new life. And as we can see, this image it happens to be flipped. Uh, the text is backwards on the, on the license plate, as we can see. So they're actually traveling the other direction. And we will flip this once we get over to Photoshop proper. But for right now, let's navigate up to the little aperture icon at the top and open in Camera Raw. Let's see what we can do to adjust the color shift in this image. First of all, we see that the highlights are a bit tweaked. Uh, but what we want to do is go up and grab our white balance tool, which is the gray dropper. Now let's navigate down to something that should be a mid-tone, such as, say, these rocks here. And let's give a click. Now we're getting closer to the color balance that uh, really exists in the photograph. From here, let's navigate over to the highlight slider and drag it back a bit. And maybe the same with the whites. Let's try our exposure slider as well, just a little. Maybe crank our shadows up a little bit. From here, let's navigate up to the detail tab, the triangle at the top. And let's apply a little luminance noise reduction. And while we're at it, apply a small amount of color noise reduction and let's crank up the detail sliders to preserve details in the scene. And maybe a small amount of sharpening as well, and I'm ever so slightly, and hold down the Alt key to mask in the sharpness exactly where we want it. In this case, I'm going to go all the way up. I only want the edges to be sharp. Let's go back to our basic tab and drag our highlights down a little bit more. Okay, I like the direction that that image is going. Let's go ahead and hold the Alt key down and open a copy in Photoshop. This will preserve our original. Okay, so here we have our photograph. Before we move any further, let's flip this image. To do that, let's Control or Command J to copy the layer up. With that new layer selected, let's go up to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Now we're heading in the right direction. And so right off the bat, just by applying a few white balance adjustments, highlight adjustments, and flipping the photograph, we're starting to produce a very realistic result. Let's take a look at another quick sample, but before we do, let's flatten this photograph and save a copy. Let's give it a slightly different nomenclature and save it out as a JPEG next to the other. Close the photograph out and go back over to Bridge. And now we're seeing something that's a little bit more realistic as to what was captured in camera. Let's take a look at another example. Let's jump over and take a look at this vertical image. In this particular image, we see that the upper portion of the photograph is nicely exposed, but the lower portion of the image is very heavily shadowed and silhouetted. Let's jump over and remedy this in Adobe Photoshop, but before we do, let's navigate up and open the image in Adobe Camera Raw for a few quick adjustments. 
right off the bat, we see the highlights are popping a bit. So let's drop those back right over here in the basic tab, maybe a little bit of the whites as well. Uh, once again, this is a Kodachrome slide, so we're shifting very heavily to the purple side. So let's go back up and grab our white balance tool, the little gray dropper, and navigate somewhere neutral toned in the scene. Let's say this roof eave. Now we're bringing in a little bit more of a natural uh, contrast and color tone for this image. It's still pretty heavily silhouetted in the lower portion, but we'll take care of that in the next step. We can see that with the white balance adjustment, we brought our highlights back up a bit. So let's navigate back over and drop those down a little bit more. We might jump over to the detail tab and apply a bit of luminance noise reduction and color noise reduction as well. And again, crank the detail sliders up a bit to preserve the details. And let's drag in just a little bit by holding down the alt key of sharpness to the edges. At this point, we might navigate over to the lens corrections panel, navigate to the manual tab, and bump up the vignetting a bit to remove the vignetting from the corners of the image. You can see in so doing, we begin to almost over crank the effect and lose our blues and start to fade the upper portion of the image out a bit. So there's a fine line in doing this. Okay, that looks pretty good. We brought a little clipping into the highlights. Let's go back over, pull them down just a little bit more. And now we're good to go on our exposure. Another change that we can make right here would be to go up to our graduated filter tab. Let's select that and let's start below the image and holding the shift key to keep it straight. Let's drag a graduated filter up this photograph, hold to about right, say here. Now at this point we have, let's zero out any previous settings that we had going on. And now let's bring the shadows up in that region and even bring the exposure up in that region. The, the higher we come, the more we blow out and wash out the image as far as the color because there just is only so much that can be done with the pixels that the scanner located. We, we really start to lose the uh, overshadowed silhouetted effect that's going on with the people down here. And to me, that's a that's a definitely an improvement to what we were seeing before. Uh, again, it cranks up the noise. So we might, you can see the red noise entering in the scene. We might back it off a bit and maintain a little bit of the silhouette just to keep the scene real. If you want to see a before and after of this effect, come down to the little sliders and click it on and off and take a look at the before and after. I would say that is definitely a vast improvement to what we had before and brings a lot more life to the lower portion of the image. Let's go back over to the hand tool and within our basic panel, let's drag the white slider back a bit and our highlight slider. Kind of work these together, something like that. At this point, we might choose to take care of some spot removal, but I'm gonna recommend we do that in the next step once we get it open in Photoshop. One more change that I might make at this stage would be to go over to the HSL grayscale tab. Let's click on the hue tab and let's slide the purple scale over towards the blue. Now let's go back up to the saturation tab and drop the saturation of that layer to lose the very heavy blue overtones. And to me, this is a vast improvement over the blue and purple uh, dominant tones that we had going in the lower portion of the, uh, of the image. And so let's go back up to our basic tab and navigate the settings on and off to see the difference that we've made so far. And as you can see, we're getting into a more natural product. At this point, we might navigate over to the lens corrections tab and choose the automatic upright control. And we can see that the image was very nicely straightened out to the point to where it removed our very heavily vignetted corners of our shot. And so this is a great place to start. I'm going to hold down the Alt key to open a copy in Adobe Photoshop. Okay, now that we're open in Photoshop, Control zero to make the image full screen. In fact, let's go over and grab our zoom tool and zoom in on the sky just a little bit more. We can now use the space bar to navigate back and forth to the hand tool where we can begin to get in a little closer for some detailed spot removal, for which I recommend the spot healing brush over on the left here, right underneath the eyedropper tool. Uh, at this point, we can just start clicking on spots and in a very intuitive way, Photoshop will allow us to start removing all of these individual flecks and spots within our nice blue sky. And I will go around and remove these spots and rejoin you in one moment when these spots have all been removed. Okay, we are almost there. Most of the spots have been effectively removed. Let's control zero to go back to our full screen. At this point, let's play around a little further. Let's go over to our 
to our layer. Let's control or command J to copy that layer up. Let's go up to filter, camera raw filter. And at this point we see that we have some highlights that still need to be contained. We can simply drag to the left to minimize those highlights. Let's grab our graduated filter again. Let's click from the top this time and drag down to the bottom. And we can see it's retaining our setting from last time, but we will zero those out by double clicking on the slider to send them back to the middle. What I would like to do here is crank the temperature slider to the left and bring some blues back into the sky again. Uh, let's go back over to the hand tool, maybe add a small amount of luminance noise reduction to these changes as we have brought exposures up and down. We have brought a little noise with us. Let's go ahead and, and provide a little bit more of a second level of noise reduction for our scene. And with that, I think that is a massive improvement over what we started with. Let's click OK. When the settings have been applied, we'll flatten this image and save it out next to the original and take a look at it before and after. So we do that by right clicking and choose flatten image. If you prefer to work in a smart object workflow, by all means, go ahead. This computer is very heavily weighed down with, uh, with uh, files and data, and, and my smart object workflow tends to move very slowly is the only reason I'm not working in it right now. So for expediency's sake, we're just going to work like this and save out a copy in our working folder right next to our original. Let's go ahead and close out of it and go back and take a look at our before and after. Once again, a dramatic difference. We got rid of the purples. We got rid of all of the little flecks and spots. We were even able to minimize the vignetting that was going on in the scene and straighten it up accordingly. So definitely a vast improvement over what we had when we started. Let's jump over and take a look at this spring village. Once again, we have a Kodachrome slide, very heavily dominated in the purple spectrum. And sometimes we just find that in these slides, we don't have much to work with, but we can further enhance the images in other ways. Let's navigate up and open it in Camera Raw. Immediately we see some highlights have been overcranked. Let's bring those down a bit. Let's bring the whites down a bit. We might choose to navigate to the Effects tab and add a bit of dehazing. We see that we have a few spots to contend with as well. Again, we can take care of that in Photoshop uh, for right now. Uh, let's crank up the temperature a bit while we're here in ACR and just bring a little bit of red out in the scene as well. We might even navigate to the HSL grayscale tab and bring the purples back to blue and desaturate the purples even further as we did in the other scene. Go back up to our details tab, just bring in a little luminance noise reduction, a little color noise reduction, crank up the detail to preserve the details of that, of that noise reduction. Let's bring in just a small amount of sharpening across the entire image to our edges. And with that, let's hold down the Alt key and open a copy. The primary objective of this particular sample is to show you uh, how to enhance the depth of field effect, if need be, on an image that does not have a lot of color data to work with. And so here we are, Control-0 to expand to full screen. Now let's Command or Control-J to copy that layer up. And with that new layer selected, let's go back up to Filter, Blur Gallery, Tilt-Shift-Blur. The tilt shift blur will allow us to apply just that. We can, anything between the two solid lines will be in focus. Anything outside heading towards the dashed line will begin to lose focus. And so we want to make sure our building is in focus and maybe bring it down a little bit more to get some of this building right here in focus and everything else can fall out of focus just to enhance the effect a bit more. As we can see in the image, the image already has a fair amount of depth of field fall off as it disappears back to the to the mountain range behind. And we just want to enhance that effect just to add a bit of uh, creative flair to the image. And you can do this to any image that you choose. Whether If you have a background you need to subdue or a subject that you need to pop, uh, this filter is a very handy way to do that. And so there we have it. It was a subtle change, but it did further uh, enhance the depth of field effect that we have going in this photograph and add further attention to our nice little chapel here in the foreground. Let's go up and select OK. Now let's come down and flatten this image. I would like to control or command J to copy the image back up again. Let's navigate to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. Let's bring our shadows up just a bit to see if there's any detail that we can bring in without bringing in too much noise in the foreground. I think that looks pretty good. We might also choose to add a small amount of temperature as well 
again, just to remove that bluish hue and get back into the nice bright spring and summer tones that we would have at this time of year. And with that, I'm going to say OK to those changes. Right click on the bottom layer, flatten the image. And let's save out a copy to view next to our original, just to see what kind of changes we have. Again, since we opened it as a copy, we did not affect any changes to our original. Let's close out of this one and go take a look. Once again, we brought a little bit of spring into the air, uh, left off with our very cool background and colors, our blues and purples, and exchanged them with a warmer look and further enhanced the depth of field effect, which really popped our chapel in the foreground. And so it's just one way to approach uh, adding interest to any given scene that you might have. And I wanted to share it with you. So let's take a look at one final example. Let's jump over and take a look at this water shot from Holland. Uh, what we have here, again, a Kodachrome slide, very heavily uh, processed to the purple side. Uh, let's go ahead and open this image up in Adobe Camera Raw. Once again, we have a lot of debris in the shot, uh, a lot of little fibers and specks of dust that have accumulated over the years. Uh, we're also very heavily shifted to the purple side, as we just mentioned. And of course, we have highlights that we need to adjust. We can go up and grab our white balance tool, as we've already looked at, and say grab down here in the neutral part of this stone wall. Uh, we can immediately, within a click, uh, begin getting back to a more natural look for this photograph. Uh, but for the sake of time, I'm going to cancel out of this image. Let's go up and grab one that I have already prepared for specifically for this tutorial. Very similar to the one we were just looking at. I just have removed all of the things from the sky. What I want to show you in this tutorial is how quickly and easily you can really restore a lot of pop and color back into a scene by way of a program like Photomatix Pro. To do so, let's drag the image directly from Adobe Bridge right over into the Photomatix Pro workflow. Now, we have it here inside of Photomatix Pro. All we need to do is select Tone Map at this point, and Photomatix will do its thing and begin to tone map the image for us and give us some options to choose from as far as presets to uh, work from as a base. As we can see here, the image is filtered through the Vibrant preset right now, which is a preset that really tone maps uh, a lot of detail into the image. And, uh, frankly, it's a very interesting look for this old shot and almost in the form of a Norman Rockwell painting. If we want to start with something a little more realistic, we might jump over to the default tab and take a look there. Again, we see uh, nice wood tones and nice realistic color tones uh, across the photograph. Again, go back and take a look at our Lightroom Hangout if you want to get more details on this. But you can really begin to play with the strength and overall saturation and effect that you're looking for uh, in the scene. And so you can really pop the color. Uh, if, if the scene has vibrant colors that you would like to have accented and it is a very capable way of doing that. So I would highly recommend incorporating Photomatix Pro into the workflow when it comes to working with older photographs. It's uh, especially very easily to do with Photomatix Pro in that you can drag single images right over into the interface and begin working right away and dialing in a look that you might like. And so I hope you found the examples uh, very helpful. Let's go ahead and click apply. And let's save out a final image next to the one that we were working with and take a look at them side by side. And so we see a massive color pop. Again, you can go in and adjust these things to your liking. Uh, the opportunities are endless when you incorporate a software like Photomatix Pro. And so, so once again, just a few handy tips. I hope that you really enjoyed uh, the benefits of working with a program like Photomatix Pro and hope that you'll give these examples a try. By all means, feel free to contact me. My name is Mark Morrow. You can reach me at mark at photofocus.com. Anything I can do to help, I'll be glad to do so. So uh, thanks again for tuning in, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Photo Focus podcast recently, get caught up on all the recent episodes and really get yourself a shot in the arm as far as inspiration because uh, it's only going to get better. And uh, thanks again for being here, folks, and I'll look forward to catching you next time. Take care.